Hello, my name is John Witt and this is a class based in moving your spine. So I'll start with moving statically, just static holds. And, and typically if I didn't feel very well, if I had something like a strain in my neck or somewhere in my back, um, I think like a static, not too long of a hold is probably the best way of getting you to move again. And then the light motions that I'm going to use today will help in leading to like bigger or more space in the body in terms of like globally. So I'm making these shorter classes so that they're more specific in um, helping you with your practice. So it's like getting more diverse practices and then, and then working more in um, kind of a diverse way, like having more options in terms of practice. Because what worked years ago for me doesn't always necessarily work in the moment. So I'm always changing my practice um, I said this yesterday in the class, like having a pattern and using the pattern is really good, but then eventually changing the pattern is, is um, something that I use and I find it very, very beneficial. So you don't really need, I'll just, at some point I'm going to use a wall and you could even use the corner of a doorway if you don't have like a full wall. Um, but how we're going to start is moving the lower body. So the more we move our legs, the better your spine will move in space. So I'm gonna be move, I'm lightly bringing my leg forward and back. And then as I'm moving it, it's, it's okay if say, the thigh doesn't really move very well. But what you're wanting to do over time is getting the thigh to move um, more in space. So when I do this with people, what happens is that they just can move from their knee. Right, but they can't necessarily move from their pelvis. So I'm moving the leg as I am, it's gonna help in moving the tissues of the upper body. So even though I'm moving my leg, my spine is rhythmatically moving its space. Really simple, simple thing to do. Um, you can notice how I'm moving my arms. You don't have to, but it's it can help in countering the balance. So I'm just kind of, you know, as if I were walking or running, right? So I'm moving my now my right leg. You know, I could hold a wall. You know, if, if I really was um, challenged with balance, you know, that, that, could, that could be a very good way of doing it. So you don't have to do it without support. Again, just kind of maybe move it slower, right? If you've never done this before, you can just kind of move it slowly in space as you get the hang of it, it's nice to move with some speed because the, 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 you know, the follow through of the leg is really what's going to help in, in moving, like I said, the tissues of the upper body. So then I'm just bringing my right leg down. So I'm going to do some hip circles. So just some hip rotations. Notice how my, my head and my torso is kind of moving in the same way of my pelvis is probably the most basic way of doing it. And then as you're moving through space, you know, you might notice that, oh, I, need, I really need to move slower. I can't move at that pace. It's, it's okay. But just some, some light motions will eventually get you into like, um, it's very good for extending and forward bending. So with some people that I work with, it's very difficult for them to bring their hips forward. And for some people, it's very difficult for them to pull their hips back in space. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. And then I'm gonna go into the opposite direction. And you can explore bigger or smaller range of motion. You know, it doesn't have to look exactly as I'm doing it. Um, you know, I say this from time to time. What's important is that you, you wanna invest in yourself. Like you wanna do the work, you're interested in, in your wellness, you know, that's what's important. As time goes on, right, uh, you'll have better mechanics, you'll have a better way of functioning. So I'm just coming back into the middle and I'm gonna be moving my tailbone down and my pubic bone up. So sticking my butt out and bringing it down. So I'm in, po in an anterior tilt and then I'm in a posterior tilt. So when I'm in a posterior tilt, my whole lower back is stretching. Really my whole spine is getting some traction, you know, similar to like, say like um, child's pose, 
little different because the pelvis is more um, in a posterior tilt and child's pose it's more neutral so I'm going to stick it out and then I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to do that a few more times and say the hip rotations were really difficult for you you know this can help and then say the hip rotations were easy but these are more difficult then I think this is the more beneficial exercise what's difficult for you in, in developing it will be more beneficial for you whatever that may be so I'm just in this posterior tilt and I'm, my knees are bent and then I'm just lining my upper body up with my pelvis so at any portion in the class you are having challenges and you don't want to participate this is a very good position to be in you know like more of an eastern stance um, very good for meditation so that my legs are straight. I'm going to go back into um, moving, but I'm going to move more my chest and my torso. So notice how I'm moving my, my chest up in space and then I'm rounding my back. So I'm, I'm not moving so much from my head, I'm moving more from my thoracic. So if it helps you to use your hand, you know, you could use your hands on your rib cage or your chest. So I'm lifting, 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 and then I'm rounding, right? I'm not hinging from the hips. So as I'm here, I'm just kind of in this hollow position, and then I'm gonna lift, and I'm gonna round, and I'm lifting really a big extension here, and the tailbone can be down, right? I'm, I'm more inclined to be in an anterior tilt, but in back bending, I want to be in a more of a posterior tilt. So I'm going to do a few more rounding and then lifting and then rounding and then lifting like a full and wherever you're, you know, if you're familiar with back extensions or back bending, you might already know an area of your back that just doesn't move as well. So that's the area that I want to lift up more. That's the area that I want to get wider in. And then I'm just coming to neutral. So I'm going to do a basic side bend. I'm just leaning to my left side. So my whole right side stretching out. And then, like I said earlier, these like more static positions might be better than what I'm going to do later in terms of like moving the spine um, with the wall. So I'm lifting myself up and then I'm going over to the right side and I'm picking up more and more through the left so that I'm, I'm targeting a specific area on the left side. So for me, when I go to my right, it's my left hip that's really um, adjusting itself. But for you, it could be your rib cage. For you, it could be your neck. Not necessarily right or wrong. It's just, you know, we'll all have different sensations. So then I'm coming up and then as I come up, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna be forward folding and rounding. But if I couldn't do that, I just wanna give you an option of you could be more in this 90 degree angle and my elbows are here and my shoulders are lifting and I could bring the weight into my heels, which is going to make it easier, but then I could bring the weight into the front of my foot. I can contract my thighs, right? I make, I'm really lifting up through the chest and, and I'm just having the arms like this because often people will, they won't use their back to help support the lower back. So I'm using my upper back to support the lower back. And then I'm coming up. So then as I'm coming up, I could repeat a side bend or I could extend. I could do a light twist, right? Just to give you some options, but I'm gonna be rounding the spine. So I'm in this forward bend. And then I'm, as I'm in this forward fold, I'm purposely rounding my back. You know, if I had osteoporosis, I wouldn't be doing this. Right. Eventually, maybe you could do it. But here, I'm rounding the spine, right? And then I'm going to roll myself up, and I'm going to extend, really extending up, so creating space from my feet up into my chest. And then I'm coming back to neutral, and then I'm going to side bend again as we did earlier. So going to the left, stretching out the right side. and then lifting myself up and going to the right. So if you ever want to hold something longer, you can certainly do that. Um, 
I'm, I'm eventually going to shorten the holes so that it's more of a motion. Again, not that it's better, but it's, you know, just to give you some variety and the motion will add more range. So say you're interested in developing more range, you know, going in and out of it will help with adding more range of motion and then bringing myself back up. So when I come forward, I'm going to come forward, but I'm going to come forward on an angle. So when I'm forward now, I'm off to the side, but I'm going to be holding my left foot with my right hand or my left foot with my left hand. And then I'm here and I'm, I'm a little bit open, but I'm still rounding my back, right? And in yoga, predominantly, it's like you should only extend in your forward bends. It's not necessarily true. You know, it's just a different way of doing it. But when I'm rounding, I'm getting more and more into the spine. So it's more of a spinal experience. So then I'm coming up. And then when I come up, I'm going to be on an angle in terms of back bending. So think left to right. So it's more left side. So as um, rib cage. But I really want to extend up. I don't want to just go into my lower back, which is really common. Um, people just want to go back more. And, and that has its place, but you really want to protect your lower back so that it's not being overly, um, you know, uh, pressurized. So I'm coming up, and then as I'm coming up, I'm just neutral. So now I'm going to go to the right side. So I'm over my right foot. I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold my uh, right foot with my right hand. And then I'm opening to the left so that as I'm opening up to the left, my left side is, 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 is slightly up, right? But I'm rounding, rounding up through the back. And then I'm going to, when I come up, I'm going to round up as I come up and then I'm going to go right to left. So now it's my right side that I'm, I'm isolating. And like in advanced yoga, there's like, all these great rotational back bends, but you, you know, most people won't get to that level, but you can still value in getting some different angles in terms of the way that you back bend, the way that you extend. So I'm getting all this great space on the right side as I go up. And again, it could be really minimal, but as it's stimulating to you, it could be just as beneficial, like more isn't necessarily better. And then I'm coming up. I'm going to do a slight rotation. I'm going to have my hand into my chin and I'm just rotating my torso to the right. So I'm, keep, I'm, I'm keeping my hips squared and I'm not turning so much from the head. I'm just turning through the upper body, right? So that I'm getting more of that um, rotation in the thoracic. So take a couple deep breaths. Again, you could be in a posterior tilt. And then I'm rotating forward and then I'm rotating to my left and, and the hand and the chin is, is something you have to use. It's just so that I'm keeping more of the rotation in my upper body. So it's, it's like I could twist more from my head, but I want to isolate more and more through my upper back. And, and then I'm coming back into the middle. So I'm going to go back into moving the chest a little bit more. And I find this, this particular area of the back probably the, the most um, stiff for people. And that's why I'm doing a little bit more. So I'm just going to be rounding my back, right? And lifting, 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 not moving from the head and just from the thoracic. So I'm rounding, rounding my back, lifting, 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 right? Extending. Then rounding through the spine, rounding, then lifting, right? trying to get a look. And you could look at your ribs. You could you could really look up to the ceiling and, and measure yourself so that you're even. Just a couple more times, I'm going to round the back, and then I'm going to lift up and try to get more of your sternum up, your clavicle. One more time, rounding. Like if you were holding on to like a big physio ball or you know, you put a bunch of pillows together, that's how your back should be rounding. Right? You should be like, oh, this is such, you know. Most people aren't moving the spine like this enough. And if, if 
if as you do it, right, you're going to notice that your back is going to become more supple. So I'm going to bring it up and stronger. Right? The spine will become stronger. So if it's already, you know, compromised or calcified, you know, then I, I wouldn't I wouldn't move into this so much. Um, I think it could be okay in an upright position, but when you get into a forward fold, that's when fractures happen, right? But I'm going to go back into that 90 degree angle just to stretch up your legs a little bit more. So I'm coming forward. I'm moving my pubic bone forward and down and in, and I'm in this 90 degree angle, right? Just to ex express through the legs. So as I'm, as I'm here, I'm extending through the chest. I'm extending up. Right away from my lower back. Take a couple deep breaths. And then bringing yourself back up. And then as you come up, um, we're going to focus a um, little bit on the pelvis, but then we're going to go into the neck. Um, obviously, you don't have to do the neck, but I'm coming into where my hands are on my hips and I'm elevating one side of my pelvis. And then I'm elevating the opposite. So I'm going from side to side. And, and, you know, as the pelvis moves, like I said, the spine is going to move better for yourself. So, you know, one side might be tighter for me. This left side's tighter. And that's something that I'll do is I'll hold that longer. But the motion, as I've mentioned before, is going to help with getting your body to move more rhythmatically you know, more harmoniously, right? And then just coming back into the middle. I'm going to go back into the posterior tilt and then an anterior tilt and a posterior tilt, sticking the butt out and then bringing it back down into a posterior tilt, right? And the posterior tilt is something that, um, you know, it's, it does happen with scoliosis, but as people get weaker and weaker through their abdomen, they become more anterior tilt. Um, so as you get, if you can maintain the strength in your abdomen, you'll have less of this sway back, right? So I'm going to be moving the head. So I'm just bringing the head down, just like a passive stretch. Now, if you could, you could bring the chin more into the chest and right? pull it in. And then lift the head, lift the chin, lift the clavicle slightly, and then bring the head to neutral. So I'm going to bring the head over the left side. So I'm doing initially just really easy, basic stretching, and you know that that might be the best form for you today. And I'm lifting the head, and then I'm lowering the head over to the right side. Right? Not concerned with how much I bring the head over. But over time, right, I can bring the head more and more over. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use some of a motion as I'm moving my head to the left, maybe to center, and then to the right, back up. So side to side, these tilts, these angles can be, you know, move really slow. You don't have to move fast. And don't be so concerned again with how much range, because that's that's usually why it becomes a bad exercise for people is that they're trying to go further and further when it's really not possible yet. So you can lift the head, go to the left, and then back up. So I'm going to do the motion of up and down. So I'm coming down and in, chin to the chest, and then lifting the chin. Again, you can hold either position if that's what you need. Bringing the chin to the chest. Bringing it up. Bringing it down. Right. If you're not doing plow, this is such a great stretch. So simple, but chin to the chest. One more time up. And then one more time in and then bringing it back to neutral. So just turn the head to the side. Just turning the head, but keeping this, the body squared. And turning the head to the opposite side. 
And you could time yourself, say you like to count, you know, it could be 10, 20, 30 reps, something like that. Um, but it could be just a minute. So if you like to focus more on the exercise, I think timing's better because then you don't have to really, you know, concentrate on counting. Just one more time over to the left and then back into the middle. So now I'm going to go to the wall. So eventually, you know, you can move the head in space and you can do waves with the body. But if, the wall is such a great way to help get the body to move. And I'm going to do a partial frontal wave with the wall. This is really the, like one of the last things that we do. Um, but you don't have to include the head and the neck. You know, that's something that maybe you don't want to do. But I'm, I'm here at the wall. My feet are forward, about two feet forward. And my back, my lower back is into the floor. My head is back in the wall. And this in itself can be, you know, very therapeutic for someone because it's it's going to help with your alignment but what i'm going to do is i'm moving my hips off of the wall and then as i move my hips away from the wall i'm in extension in my lower back but i'm trying to individually move more and more up through my spine so that eventually my chest is into my chin and this is what happens when we do bridging on the floor right but then I'm going to bring my upper back into the wall, slow, nice and slow, moving again um, through each facet. And then as you move back and back into the wall, you might find areas of your back that just don't move. Over time, they'll move better, right? So now everything's into the wall again. I'm going to do a full um, spinal wave so the hips are forward, coming forward individually lifting through my back now when i'm here trying to get my chin all my chest all the way up into my chin and then i'm pushing through my feet and now my head top of my head is at the wall right so you got to control it by bringing the back of your head in the wall and then as you bring the back of your head in the wall chin into the chest upper back into the wall right, mid back into the wall, low back into the wall, right, and pelvis. And maybe you're moving at a different speed than mine. You know, maybe you've done these before, but I'm moving my pelvis off the wall, low back off the wall, chest and ribs lifting, full, full extension, lifting off. So I'm really using my feet and there's not a lot of weight in my head. Right? My legs are supporting me. And bringing my chin into my chest as I go back from the back of the head. So it's better on, say, like a slippery wall. You know, if the wall is really kind of coarse, um, your hair can get pulled a little bit. And it takes a little bit of coordination, right, to get the hang of it. So again, moving each and every vertebrae back into the wall, pelvis goes back in the wall, and then I'm moving. So I'm gonna do a few more of these. So away, pushing through the feet, lifting through the chest, extending up, right? And then bringing the chin to the chest, and then coming down, back, 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 shoulders, upper back, right, middle of your chest, you know, slow, you know, it's very easy to do these quick and you're, you're kind of missing out on uh, manipulating the tissues. So just come away from the wall and just stand and you might see that it's a little bit easier to stand You find that um, you're more upright, right? But I'm going to go back into like some of the more basic things just as like more of like a, like a cool down. But like I said, as you spent more time individually on more specific things, you can see more growth. If, you know, if we always do the same thing, you know, it feels good and it's better than nothing. But if you really want to elevate your practice and your awareness, having more specific practices, but again, changing them up is, is, is what I recommend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, I'm going to be my 
bring my chin into my chest and I'm gonna be rounding my back. Now, if you don't wanna fold all the way forward again, you could be in this 90 degree angle, but I'm purposely rounding my back, right? As I'm in this rounded position, letting the head go, I'm gonna slowly roll myself up, back up, and then coming into extension, lifting up, I'll bring my chin into my chest, slowly rounding and you might be like oh this one particular part of my back just doesn't move like this area this angle is very good for me but i will go more forward because maybe maybe you need more of a fuller angle but a lot of times people base their their forward folds or their you know their hinging from how much they touch the floor but if like i said if you want to focus more on your spine my hands are purposely off the floor so I'm going to push through the feet. I'm in a posterior tilt. I'm rolling up and then I'm extending up. Full extension, right? Again, predominantly through the thoracic. And then I'm just coming back into the middle. I'm going to um, follow up with a side bend. So I'm off to the side, stretching out the right side, letting the head go. It could be past you know, it could be active too. You know, if you really need more space on the right side, lift it up more. And then as I carry myself up, I'm gonna to go to the right and the same thing applies. And when I'm, you know, practicing on my own, I say this all the time, I'm, I'm definitely gonna hold one side longer than the other. You know, it's, it's good to stay consistent. You know, the consistency of holding something for say five breaths or a couple minutes, something like that, is that it, it gets you to do it, right? But over time, you're really going to have to be a little bit more um, strategic in adjusting yourself and bringing myself back up. So as I'm up, I'm going to turn my head over to my right shoulder, right? keeping my torso squared, turning my head over my left. So you can kind of see with your eyes or your face if the head's tilting a certain way. It's, you know, it may be. So I'm gonna turn back over the right. And then back over the left. And then back to center. So I'm just bringing the chin into the chest. And then looking up. Bringing the chin into the chest one more time. Looking up last time. And bringing the head to neutral. So I'm gonna finish up in just the stance. So you, you know, you could pick the feet up and down, right? Maybe the feet are a little um, numb from standing as much as we are. So you can move around a little bit. But what I'm going to be in is, is just that stance is I'm going to be off to the side. My tailbone is down, my pubic bone is up, and my arms are relaxed. And I'm just bringing the weight. You know, if there's a lot of weight in the toes, you might be leaning too far forward. So I'm trying to get this underneath me. And then still my, my glutes are relaxed. It's just getting the pelvis to be more posterior and then being more upright. And then you'll feel over time, the traction throughout your back. So just like 10 breaths, nothing long, more neutral. Straighten it up through the legs. 
So I hope you like that class, you know, moving the spine as we did, you know, there's many, many ways to do it. I, you know, I mix it up as much as I feel is stimulating. Cause if I, like, if, if I did it as I do it, you might be like, the, um, it's just too repetitive. So I'm changing it the way that I did, you know, it, I, I like to think that it's going to make the time go quicker and you, you know, you feel just as good. So it's just a way of changing things up, but the wall is such a great way to manipulate the spine. You could do the spinal waves on the ground as well. So if you like the video, you can share it, you know, you can, um, share it with friends, family, find people that are in need of, of wellness. You can share my information with them. So, uh, hopefully I'll see you soon in class. Uh, you could always send me a message or a video if you're struggling with something and I'd love to help you more. All right. Take care. Have a wonderful weekend.